Good morning, Facebook land. It is Jillian. Eh, okay, so <laughs> yesterday was the first time that I felt so fucking amazing. And I woke up this morning relatively amazing. Um, I only had one piece of food yesterday. And that's all I really needed. I wasn't majorly hungry. This morning I woke up early. I wasn't blowing my nose like I needed, like I, like I, you know, I wasn't blowing my nose. I haven't pooped yet. I don't know if I will today, but, um, I have a very clear mind. I'm energetic. I still feel the environment and there's still a little bit right here because it's, it's, we're in a really aggressive environment that I even feel it and I'm reacting to it, but the crazy thing is, is I'm not super hungry. I was, I had that food that I had yesterday, but I wasn't trying to release demons this morning. There was no trigger to release demons and I'm really clear headed. And that's a trip. That's a freaking trip. No pain in my arms, no pain anywhere. Um, I still feel the strength. Like my body is still converting stuff. But, um, it's kind of crazy. And so it's funny when I was 19, 18, whatever, 19, 20, 21, I took these courses a long time ago in California. And one of the main, main concepts that I learned right out of the gate is what you resist will persist. And I spent thousands and thousands of dollars at this, on this courses that was given that was given out, you know, sold, um, in San Francisco, Oakland, wherever. And that was that landmark education course that has been pretty much kind of like the framework of my life. And there are a lot of concepts that I still remember today, but what was really now what's coming full circle, the things that I learned back when I was 19 and 20, was, yeah, what you resist will persist, but on top of that, what you persist, what you resist will persist, and it will also destroy you. And that's exactly what's going on. So I'm going to add more to that. So even though they have that concept of what you, what you resist will persist, your resistance will eventually destroy you, whatever it is to whatever will destroy you. Because it's not necessarily what you're, what's persisting or what you're, is, is really destructive. It's the fact that you're resisting it. Okay? Because yeah, I mean, cancer is destructive, but it can be released if you understand the mechanisms. But when you resist cancer, right? Instead of just Feeding your body and making sure that your your immune system, which is basically your, all of your upper and lower hemisphere are open, when you're attacking something, when you're carving something out, when you're treating something, anything in the medical holistic industry is about resistance or cutting something out. All politics, all religion is resisting somebody else. All of it. All the science dogma is about resisting somebody else. Genders. Even genders. The extreme, okay, is about resisting the extreme on each end and then coming together because the fireworks are so, and that's what causes attraction in my husband and I. And so, yeah, so every single thing, every political dogma, everything is about resistance. And kids are forced to resist evolution. Adults have been trained to resist evolution, change, resist somebody else's dogmas, resist somebody else's belief system. And so whenever you resist somebody, they become a weapon of war to you, but you're choosing to resist them. That's the thing about resistance is something that's a choice. That's crazy. Resistance is a choice. Is a choice. It's not something that someone forces you into unless they're backing you into a corner, unless they're physically backing you into a corner, which you, then you put yourself in a position 
You're surrounding yourself with people who are resisting you, trying to back you into a corner. And so when you think about it, when you're basically on your own, lessening the resistance around you, then you're choosing to resist that person who will persist, like your husband, your wife. People that are like your animals. Yeah, but can you handle it? Well, I guess you'll figure that out. I can't be the one to tell you you can't handle your animals or your husband or your wife. But whatever you keep around, and that's what I have to remember. There you go. And so, everyone around you, even your animals, are in resistance to you. And they also will persist. And then you will determine if you can survive, survive their resistance to you, to you, and vice versa. I can only handle the resistance via my husband and minimal social contact because too much resistance will destroy, especially in a highly uh, uh, aggressive environment. And so resistance has always been a weapon of war. And so resistance has always been a weapon of war. So, yeah, I mean, holy crap. And so I'm choosing to be with my husband and I'm choosing, even though I'm choosing to allow his persistence through my resistance be around. That's the attraction. But see, then when you surround yourself with so many people and you're always out there in crowds of people, then you are in high resistance around so many people that eventually it'll destroy you. And then, of course, the pleasure and paradise and the positive illusion and science, all that. Yes. That's, <laughs> that's some crazy shit. Everyone around you, even your animals, are in resistance to you, and they also persist. And then you'll determine if you can survive their resistance to you and vice versa. I can only handle the resistance with being my husband and minimal social contact because too much resistance Will, dis will destroy, especially in a highly aggressive environment. And so resistance has always been a weapon of war. <laughs> you know, I tell you, man, it's crazy. It's, and when you realize that everything is connected, all the, all the different cultures, and even though there's land bridges and time and, cult and, and belief systems separating us, we're all related on so many levels. Of course we are. I just discovered this morning, when you think of it, Italian and Latins were actually related. I mean, I kind of knew, but not Latin, Latino, and then Italian. And then I know I'm looking at Al Pacino. He could play both Cuban, you know, as well as Italian, and you can never know the difference. That's why some of these actors, they're ambidextrous. They can play a lot of different roles because the cultures are so closely related. And, ah, uh, it's crazy. So I, it makes sense that, yes, spaghetti saved my life, and I love my... Hispanic Mexican food and you need meat milk cheese eggs and all that stuff and so I'm just like oh my god I, this is such a trip but I, there's not much really to say because no matter what if you can't assimilate and you're always in resistance it's not I can't make you assimilate if you've been taught resistance to everything, then it's not going to fucking matter what I say. I just am just marveling at what it is I've been discovering. And then the energy, the energy I have, and I got to clean up this upstairs today. I cleaned up downstairs. I had so much energy yesterday. And, but it's, it's, wow. Yeah. And people are, you know, California is being affected. California now is being fed. They're getting heat waves. When you see a heat wave in California, you're like, oh, it's summer. Oh, no, oh, they're telling you a heat wave, triple digits. Oh, yeah. People are going to be dropping like flies. And if you are in the in the workout world, 
and all that stuff and you're like oh I have little fat I'm only 20% fat I'm so skinny and oh god I feel sorry for those in California who are under the vegan and vegetarian the little fat I'm already prepared for a lot of shit I, I hate to say it but I'm prepared for a lot of shit and I don't know how I, I don't know I don't know how I don't know I don't even want to say it cause I'm just gonna fucking just whatever but California's getting hit. Yeah, Hollywood, man. They're, Hollywood told us. Hollywood told us. And so, if you have some weight on you, you got energy conversion. You could release the demons and take on a new programming, release the old. But I'll tell you, man, if you don't, if you're all muscly and super skinny, there you have you, you have no room. You have no room to convert energy. You're in high resistance. And skinny people are in high resistance. Even extremely obese people are in high resistance because they can't release the demons. What can you say? You can't say anything. I mean, I, I, and that's the thing with America. It was the last greatest experiment. You have the, whole, the two coasts and you have middle America. At some point, they're going to have to merge. And then we're going to merge in with the rest of the world. And you got to be the one to stay alive and let your government figure out how to hold the riffraff to account. And then you protect yourself because the policemen can't protect you. They can only arrive after the fact, assuming you survive whatever situation that you're calling them for. So maybe I would advise you not to get in situations that you have to call the police for where they can arrive after the fact. whether you And then you either be dead or alive, one of the two. So you better not be in situations where you have to be calling the police. you got to protect yourself. And if you choose to go out there and you're, and you're packing heat, well, you're knowingly, again, walking into danger. If you're that scared of your environment where you have to bring a GUN anywhere, you're walking into danger. Why the fuck would you do that? You're inviting karma. And in this environment, I wouldn't want to risk going out there to people who are half-cocked and triggered, highly fucking triggered. Not when they're suffering, because it's bad. I mean, even though I feel the energy, it's not like holding me down or make me feel like, oh my God. I mean, I have, I feel the energy, but I'm not even crazy hungry right now. I had that one thing that I showed you yesterday. That was all I had. I, and, I, and I did so much downstairs and even in the basement and moved stuff out and threw stuff away. And I still, I feel like the strength in my arms. I mean... I got muscle here. I don't have to work out. That's the thing. I don't have to work out because my internal, my internal environment is working out for me, just trying to survive an aggressive environment. It's like the environment is working out my muscles and my immune system. But before in the old world, when they didn't have the aggressive environment, you can, you can build your body and play the games of programming yourself to look like a bodybuilder and a hot person. But now this environment is so highly aggressive that's causing your insides to work out and develop a resistance too. And then you have to feed it to give it some give so it can finally push out stuff and bring on stuff. But you know how people are, they don't understand the world they live in. Remember they're under the influence. So yeah, I mean, I just say this stuff just to kind of get off my chest, but I mean, I already knew America was the last greatest, greatest experiment. I knew that all the different coasts with well, the different coasts and the different cultures you know, um, in, in, in middle America, it was, it was all contrived. Why do you think, why do you think they have the Southern down there in the South and you have the Northeast, your strong people, and you have the, the two coasts, which are the, like the innovators, um, the eggheads, and you have the infrastructure built in middle America. And then eventually those two worlds would have to come together. But now with this politics that's going on, it's like the system is purposely antagonizing the left with the right and the right is being antagonized by the left and, and vice versa and all that. And then only the strong out of those two worlds will rise to the top. The weak are going to die anyway. So they can't handle air, food and water and they can't handle change. They can't handle immigration. They can't handle anything. So the system will keep antagonizing them with the politics and stuff in the public school system that they're like, oh my God. And so that's fine. But I walked away from the war because I can't handle 
I, I don't want to, to, to die from resistance. And I don't want to be destroyed by whatever I put. Why would I even go there? Why would I even, like, you know, fight against? That's a civil war. That's what happened back in the 1860s. And so, yeah, Democrat, Republican is still a civil war, but now it's even more so because they're bringing, they're, now they're, they're, they're using gender and immigration. And they're using children as a way to really get under the skin of people who are like, oh my God, save the children. And of course, all this stuff with, that you saw the last how many years, Epstein and Weinstein, and then all the child trafficking, all that stuff. Oh yeah, it got under people's skin. Now they are so in resistance and they have an enemy and they can't get out of it. It's done. And they have a hero and there's a Satan and oh my God. And so I, I, I know exactly what's going on. They're, they're building a resistance on both ends and then the weak will die. They are. They are. Either a highly muscular or a highly intolerant. And they're aging aggressively. And they won't change. A lot of them are men. A lot of them are women. So I just walked out. I walked away from the war. I'm done. The medical, holistic, energy healing world, all about resistance. Everything that's going on is resistance personified and expert and like highly, highly, highly aggressive, influential. And that is a way to release the demons. Literally release the demons. And some people do not have the capacity to get it. They do not have the intellectual capability to understand where I'm coming from. They do not. And, and they don't even have the the physical, immunological capability to understand where I'm coming from or even find a way to, to redirect. And that's kind of the nature of the beast because that was the old world, was to be a certain way and to actually change. It is a conditioning process. It really is. I've been conditioning for change. Well, actually, I've never had an identity of sorts, so it was easy for me. I can go from group to group and area to area, state to state, and get information, pick it up, and take it with me, you know, and file it in the back of my files, and then one day it'll it'll be useful when all the conditions are right. But I could have stayed I could have stayed stuck in the holistic world. I could have stayed stuck in the in the conspiracy world. But resisting my government was not gonna fucking work. How many people have resisted their government and they ended up either dead or in jail? Or, uh, or, who knows? Yeah, you don't resist your government. You don't. So when I figured out that I can't resist my government, then I saw how things could be painted if they wanted to be, if it was that, like, yeah. You don't want to fuck with your government. You don't want to resist your government. You have to understand where they're coming from and get out of the war and save yourself. Because they're giving you the freedom to save yourself. You're the one that chooses to resist change. You're the one that chooses to have a bunch of children. You're the one that chooses to take all your remedies and surgeries and go get all your operations and whatever. You're the one that chooses to take a side, Biden or Trump. You're the one that chooses all this shit. You invite karma into your world. So resistance is a choice. Resisting immigration is a choice. Resisting pain and suffering is a choice. Choosing pleasure in paradise and resisting, choosing anti-New World Order is a choice. I mean, when you're making money from all these choices, why would you stop, right? Why would men stop making money until the system forces them to stop or the industry is gone or the environment takes them down so many notches that they can't do their job until they figure it out? I mean, that's the thing is, you know, <laughs> so there's really nothing really you can say to people. But I like to say this stuff because I'm just like, holy shit. There's just so much information. That's, that's what I'm saying. With all this information that I have, that I, I mean, how, th- what, what direction can I take? Because every single time I bring something up, I can take it up from that direction, that direction, that angle, that angle. Like as far as writing a book. Oh, my God. I'm not writing a book for a long ass time. And if I do write a book, I don't know. I don't know. It's a lot. It's like basically changing your whole society. It's everything, everything that you know. It's completely flipped. Like everything. Like saying your whole way of life 
is now has to go to the wayside and you have to do something completely fucking different. And that's a lot to outline and to cover every single fucking aspect, point, angle. Oh my God. And it would have to do with physics, chemistry, biology. I mean, politics, everything that you could ever study in college, I would be covering. And that's a lot to fucking cover. That's a lot of fucking work. <laughs> so I just got to sit here and be like, okay, this is what it is. Man. So, I I just needed to get it off my chest so whatever about resistance. In northern, I mean, I have all these analogies that are so aligned and so right on. And everything that I've been doing was speaking to all of this. But I knew in snippets, like my gut knew in snippets what needed to be done, what needs to be done, how to explain it well. That was the last seven, eight years. And what are we going into? What? <laughs> Almost in 2030? What are we in 2024? It's, we're over half in this year. Over half. It'll be 2025 before we know it. And my license runs, I just got my, my license. It runs out in 2030 or 2028 or something like that. So I, I, yeah, that's all I got to say. I don't really know what else to say at this point. And even if I put this all on my website and whatever. It's too late for so many people. And just being right is not going to make a damn difference. Knowing what's going on is not going to make a difference. If people can't survive it, it's not going to matter what I know is correct or not. <laughs> so it doesn't even matter. But it's for me. And so, and all I got to say for all of you, if you do have the choice and you understand where I'm coming from, be the one to survive it. Be the one to survive whatever the hell it is. And I'll tell you, the pain and suffering that you'll go through to get to this point is fucking astronomical. It really is. What I had to deal with the last three years, and I have no, and I had a dog and a husband, which was still a little difficult having to deal with that plus in my own sickness. And then having to fight to say why I'm staying home and not going off and doing things and hanging out with people. And why I was getting, and my, you know, my husband and I were talking the other day about, he's like, why don't you go out and do things with people? Because uh, I don't know. I mean, now I probably can hang out a little bit, but I'm not going to go and just sit with a bunch of people drinking and smoking and doing drugs or whatever. Uh, that's not going to happen for me. I mean, occasionally I'll go fishing. Yes, I'll go fish. Uh, I'll go fishing with people. That's fine. But the last time I went fishing, it triggered a major colony forming unit in my body. That might have been the last little bit. Who knows? I don't know what's in the body. It are, like, I'm on this area of an unknown. I am venturing into the unknown. But I feel great today. No hunger. I mean, I, I know I'm dealing with stuff. My body's building stuff up. I know my eyes... They look like there's a little bit of circles, and I, you know, and I do fall asleep. I catch myself snoring. I slept, you know, a good few hours, and I'm listening to videos in the middle of the night, and I'm up around three in the morning peeing and all that stuff. But I feel okay. I feel actually really good. So you're never gonna know when you're gonna feel okay enough. Sometimes you might have to, like people in the diet other groups, they have to stay home because every single time they get together with people or go anywhere, it triggers something in them. To release the demons. And they don't know how to release the demons. So they just get triggered and they feel stuff. And they're like, oh my God. So, yeah, I'll go fish with my husband at some point when it cooled down. But the heat right now is insane. Yeah, so when the heat goes up and down, that's when the expansion and contraction of your blood vessels. And then plus all the growth. And then plus all 
the other deficiencies. And so like the whole process of elimination, if you're starting to, to remedy your disease and that starts then compounding the issues that you have. And that's the thing with, 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 with resistance is the ones, the weakest ones go first and then the strongest ones are taking down certain notches. And if they don't understand how to redirect certain things, then it doesn't matter if the system does calm things down. They may not even survive. The strong people may not even survive the, the environment going up and down, up and down, up and down. And so that's, and so you don't want to be like those in the rat colony where the last people surviving are so traumatized sitting in the chair, like musical chairs. And they're so psychologically traumatized, physically traumatized because everyone around them is dying or dead or they're like hanging on by a string. And then the system finally like calms down the frequencies or whatever. There's no more climate change. And they're like the last one surviving. But they, if the wind blows differently, they won't be able to survive it. You don't want to be in that position where you're hanging by a string at the end of this whole climate change shit. You want to be able to be strong during this climate change and weather the storm and survive the storms and listen to indicators. You don't want to hope that you're strong enough to, to, to resist everything and still be okay when the climate change is done. You don't want to be in that position. And so sometimes, yeah, knowing when to quit when you're ahead is probably the best thing, but ah, people don't, people don't know how to quit when they're ahead. It's like gambling. If they're, if they're still making money and, and have credibility, they're not going to fucking stop. They don't know when to stop. Gamblers don't know when to stop. I was a gambler. I don't, I, and, and I, I don't gamble anymore. But I remember when I went to the, the casinos a couple of years ago with my husband and I had $20 and I knew I, that's always, I, that was as much as I was willing to lose. It was 20 bucks. I did parlay that up to like 60 or 80 and bought us dinner because I was playing craps. But that's, you know, I said, you know, if I don't, if I lose the 20 bucks, great. But if I make money off it, fuck yeah. But it's knowing when to stop, quit when you're ahead. How many men and women out there don't know when to quit when they're ahead? They can't. They've trapped themselves. They have a bunch of children. They have, they have friends and family and they have animals and all this other shit. That's the jail. Those are the invisible bars that keep people totally stuck in resistance to change because you can't change. It's not even that they're resisting. They just can't. They're the major breadwinners. But see, that's the thing with my husband. If I had to work, he would have to let go of his, his boat and only have the little boat that he has that's already paid off. He would have to downsize to a smaller truck. And those are the two major expenses that that he would let go. And so he has room to do that. And I could work 30,000 a year or whatever someplace if I needed to. And we still make our bills if it ever came to that. But he'd have to cut down his lifestyle if he couldn't work. But at least he has that opportunity, that option. Some people don't have that, oppor that opportunity. They're the only breadwinner. They have five kids. And they have friends and family, everyone expecting them to perform. They can't fucking do anything. You have these grandmothers that purposely put themselves and insert themselves into their family's life. And they are babysitters and so they can't do anything. And if they try to extricate themselves from the family of those responsibilities, then they're threatened that, oh, if you don't want to babysit my kids or do this and you're not going to see your kids, why are you staying away from our family, mom or grandma, or whatever? So even these grandmothers put themselves in a position not to be able to change. So it's an invisible jail. It's fucking crazy. But I wanted to make sure my husband had enough room where he could cut down his lifestyle if he wanted to, when all the conditions are right. And so at least he has that opportunity. So if the environment says it's time for him to scale shit back, he, at least he could do it. I mean, no man likes to, 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 <laughs> to be told that they have limitations. Of course not. But at some point, men are going to have to figure out they have limitations. And even women. But you know how women and men are when they have been so capable. They don't, they don't know when to quit. And they'll die for their lifestyle. They'll die for their belief system. They'll keep gambling, gambling until they're bankrupt. And that's right now what's going on. People are gambling on credit. Eventually, the... <laughs> The credit system is going to bankrupt them. 
They won't have any more credit to use. They're done. They're at their limit. But it's kind of cool to see how this shit works. But I feel good. I feel great. I feel wonderful. <laughs> so anyways, um, yeah. That's all I'm going to say at this point right now because it's, you know, I mean, it's what, 623? Jesus, Jillian, 623. Why are you up so early? Because the environment is so, is so energetic. And I have energy. So I'm going to organize up here and do what I got to do. But I'll tell you, the basement is is definitely cleaner. I mean, my my refrigerator is clean as it's ever been under the, uh, what do you call it, under the, the oven. Clean as hell. So I'm going to take care of my shit. And I already took care of. My body, my mind, my spirit, I got, I took, that was the first priority is make sure that my body, mind, and spirit was okay. Even if I had to do the bare minimum in the house. Now that my body, mind, and spirit is okay, I know what to do when things go whatever because, you know, how shit goes. You never know what comes up in the pipeline. And when frequencies get even more so, who knows what else is lurking that has to come through, come up. So, but at least I know how to react to it. And I have the energy to make sure other things taken care of. And so, and that's what it comes down to. You, your health is the most important. But again, everyone's on, on different ends of the spectrum. Some are nearing the end of their life, and so they're just like doing everything they can before their whole before the system takes them down. Other people have room to quit when they're ahead and redirect and go through what they have to go through to gain another lifeline. And sometimes quitting when you're ahead will save your ass than trying to eke out the last little bit and think that you'll be able to know. There's no guarantee, and you don't know when something is a trigger in your body to cause you to then really pull back a whole lot more than you than what you're doing. So, yep, yeah, it's a gamble. Everyone has a different threshold of their gambling, and we'll see what happens. Those that die suddenly, they didn't know to quit when they're ahead, or they just are at the end of the credit line. The devil took his due, even in that genetic line, with children, animals, people, yeah. All right, that's it. Bye.